Right everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to the office. In today's video I just wanted to touch on a subject I haven't had to touch on before. YouTube has issued me my first ever copyright strike and I don't know what to do about it. I, I, well, I do know what to do about it and that's play to the rules for the next three months because once you've got one copyright strike if in the next three months you get another that's two and within that three months if you get three well your channel could well be terminated with nothing you can do about it so look guys at the moment I am one third of the way to my channel being terminated and that's a little bit of a worry so let me explain what happened usually when you upload a video it's got copyrighted content in it the copyright owner will uh, put a claim on your video. Now they have three options. They can either just leave it, they can either track the stats, or, uh, you know, most commonly, they can take the revenue from the video. Now, even me, I've got probably six or seven videos on YouTube that is using my content, and basically it's just people who've downloaded my uh, rugby tutorial videos and then uploaded it on their channel. Straight up, you know, they haven't made any changes to it, they haven't put any reactions to it, nothing like that, and you know, I see that and I know that they're not going to be earning a hell of a lot, so I just leave it. I just leave it. But the, the likes of NFL, the likes of, uh, you know, NHL, NCAA, things like that, rugby, Rugby World Cup, um, they see videos, they see content that, that, that comes up, other people have used their content, they don't like it, they hit it with claims. Now that's fine. What I did recently is I decided to really, really back the Jaguars, like I said, and I made full match reactions. That's two hour long videos to the first four games of the season. And I absolutely loved it. I put so much effort into those to be on for two hours straight. Commentating on a game, giving my reaction is not easy. And I put so much effort into those. It was two hours making the video. It was three hours editing at least. Another two hours on the back end. That's seven or eight hours per video. And I did four of them. So that's at least 30 hours work I put into these. I uploaded them to YouTube expecting them to get a copyright claim on them but what happened this time is uh, the NFL decided to block them in the US and obviously you know majority of the viewers that are going to watch that video are in the US now that really fucked me off and I tried everything to try and basically beat that claim so that it couldn't get blocked I tried to speed it up by 1% I tried to speed it up by 2% I tried to speed it up by 3% it wouldn't work this is the whole entire video I'm talking about. Um, I tried to, you know, cut pieces out. It, it, nothing would work. The, the videos were blocked. I was like, well, fucking hell, what am I going to do here? So I decided to write out, you know, a, a really, really detailed, specific paragraph to go and dispute these claims because I really wanted my audience to be able to see these. These were going to be, you know, probably my best work for the actual regular season, full match reactions to the Jaguars. So I went and, and dis disputed these claims, which is what you can do. If you feel like, you know, you, you are in the right, if you feel like um, the copyright claims are not valid, if you feel like you've changed the content uh, enough to, you know, beat those claims, you can, you can dispute it. And, and that's what I've done for a few videos, but what I will say is that, you know, at, at one point I had probably 300 claims on videos, and I went through and took a whole day, I think it was two days, and disputed every single one of those claims. And you know what happened? Nothing. I got nothing out of it. Every single one of my disputes was, you know, uh, not seen uh, valid by YouTube and by the NFL. So what happened was I disputed the claims. I didn't really know this because it hadn't happened before, but what a uh, copyright claim holder can do so what the NFL can do is they see me dispute it then they have the option of okay either not entertaining the dispute which is what usually happens or they can go one step further and actually uh, request that the video gets removed from YouTube and that's what happened luckily it was only on one of the full match reactions it wasn't on the four the other three were left alone thank God because what happens, once you dispute a claim and your video gets taken down because of that, that is a copyright strike. That's one copyright strike against your name and against your channel. And they don't even tell you about it. 
I never got, I get an email every single time one of my, you know, videos is claimed. I get an email every single time one of my, uh, one of my disputes is, is, is thrown out. But I never got an email telling me that I had a copyright strike on my channel. So one day I logged into my YouTube channel, I saw a little red piece of text up the top and it, it said one of three copyright strikes with a little bar going across. It was 33% full. I was like, what the fuck is this? I went on there. I found, I found out that the video was taken down. I didn't even know that that video was taken down. I still had three left on my channel, but the first one got, got removed and I got my first copyright strike. So guys, basically I've got to be on my best behavior for the next three months or actually you know what I don't really all I need to do is just not dispute any of these copyright claims which really you know annoys me because at the end of the day YouTube has, has, has actually really come to the party um, as far as you know people doing reaction videos and people doing you know opinion based videos on other people's content because you are transforming that content in those two hour reactions, I was completely transforming that game, giving my opinion, spreading the game of YouTube around the world, especially to Australia and New Zealand. And, uh, you know, I thought I was doing my part. I thought it was okay, but uh, lo and behold, you know, I, I basically, I won't be disputing any more copyright claims because at the end of the day, if they do decide, you know, sitting in their office, I really would love to see the back end of, of, of the NFL, um, YouTube channel and see who runs it and how many people they've got and and how serious they take these claims and whether they've seen my videos or if my videos just been you know on a list of heaps of other YouTubers who've used their content and they've just pressed click 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 delete 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 uh, who would know who would know un unless you actually work for them so the back end of YouTube is, is a bit of a secretive old place. Um, I'm, I'm still working it all out and this was an experience that just adds to my my YouTube experience, you know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, I don't really care. It's just a couple of videos, but I, I, I really, the thing that pisses me off, and this is what always pisses me off when, when videos get blocked is, it's not the revenue that I'm missing out on because I don't get fuck all. It's the fact that my audience don't get to see that video. And every single video that I upload on my channel, I've put a hell of a lot of effort into. And that's something I'm proud of. But at the end of the day, I'm proud of this too. <laughs> and whatever YouTube does, whatever fucking NFL does, you can never, you can never take this away. 100,000 subs plaque. I'll always have that. Not many people in the world do. I still feel amazing every time I look at it. It's sitting right here in my office and um, you know at the end of the day uh, what's one copyright strike? If I had two I think my live streaming uh, ability gets taken away for three months so that would probably be a bit more of a, a hit and I'd probably be getting a bit more serious about it but one out of three ain't bad <laughs> as they say um, and uh, look I just wanted to update you guys it's probably one of the reasons why I haven't been in this office. I haven't really been, you know, putting my all into my content lately. And the reason why you haven't seen many videos lately is because I've sort of just been taken aback for a couple of weeks um, after that happened. Just thinking about, thinking about what to do, thinking about, you know, this next stage of my YouTube career. Um, you know, possibly thinking about going away from the whole reaction thing because I need to know that that my videos are going to be, you know, eligible for YouTube. There's also something else that's happened on the back end of YouTube, and that is content that is geared towards children, but is produced on the YouTube app rather than the YouTube Kids app. The ad revenue that is going to be directed towards that content is going to be slashed by up to I think up to like 75% or something crazy like that. So, so, you know, channels who are kid related, maybe gaming channels, things like that, toy unboxing channels, um, possibly vlog channels that include young kids, those channels, unless they do something drastic about changing the way that they, they produce their content and the way that they target their content, their revenue is going to be slashed. But what that means for me, being that I'm a channel that's not you know, specifically targeted at kids, 
is the fact that I'm hoping that maybe some of that revenue gets, you know, dispersed among us creators that that uh, that don't have to worry about that. So what that means is that in January 2020, I'm going to be, you know, eagerly watching my my revenue statistics to see whether, you know, the changes are implemented. I know that those, you know, kid-related channels are either going to have to transfer across to YouTube Kids or they're, they're basically just going to have to take the hit, which is unfortunate, it really is. But I can also see why, and the, and the reason is because basically what was happening, you know, kids were, were jumping on their parents' um, accounts, whether it was on their phone or their, their laptop, computer, or and um, searching up these accounts whilst signed in to the adult's account. And what, what YouTube has is, is a, an age restriction. You can't create a YouTube account unless you're 13 years old. And what YouTube was finding is that kids under the age of 13 were jumping on their, their parents' accounts or getting on it somehow and watching the content that they wanted, but then in the related box it was coming up with all this other kind of stuff that was on the main YouTube app. And it was basically, you know, exposing kids to content that they really shouldn't be exposed to. And that's what YouTube Kids came in to try and help. But people obviously haven't transferred across to YouTube Kids. Now, now parents out there that want to let their kids watch YouTube, they should be signing into YouTube Kids and then giving it to their kids to watch. But uh, it, it wasn't happened. So YouTube's come in and, and made this change and basically they've put a box, a tick box on the back end. Once you upload a video, you either tick whether it's aimed at kids under 13 or not. If you don't tick that, you won't be hit by the revenue um, slashes. If you do tick that, obviously you will be hit. Now where the grey area comes in is people who do still upload content that's aimed towards kids, but don't tick that box, you're going to be eligible for fines, you're going to be eligible to get your you know, channel terminated, videos blocked, all that kind of thing, and it's, it's just not something you want to mess with. So for me, going forward, I don't tick that box because I don't believe that my, my content is geared towards kids under 13, and I guess I'm lucky in that respect. So anyways guys, this video is about my YouTube strike. I'm not worried about it, but it's something that you just need to, you know, um, I guess take into account. And, and the fact is, is that copyright claim holders have the power to issue you with a strike if you dispute the claim. So uh, it's up to you guys what you want to do. But I just thought I'd bring the information to my audience because that's what I always do in an open and honest way. And um, <clears throat> That's it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> My channel is effectively one third of the way to being terminated. That's a fucking scary thought. But unless I get to two thirds of the way, I'm honestly not worried whatsoever. So with that being said, I wish you guys a good day and peace out.